What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745 and welcome to the team building series Team Spotlight. This is the series where we explore exciting new teams, themes, and more. Right now we are entering episode 17 and we have a pretty special team for you. It's going to be Captain America and Colossus and I named them the Immovable Objects. The first name I had for them was the Impenetrable Defense. And throughout this episode, you're going to see that they live up to both of those names. Now for the PvE battles, we are using the Infiltrator Power Armor and the Sinister Scepter. And the reason we're using the Scepter is because we don't want any enemies to hit our agent. We'd rather them go through Colossus or Captain America. Unfortunately, we do have to drop the Scepter when we go into PvP. And that's because we're going to need to use the Scroll of Angelob, just in case we have to remove some things from the enemies and we're fully expecting to go against some Cyclops teams, so we definitely want to be able to remove combat expertise. With the Emerald Prism, Captain America and Colossus are both going to be really hard to hurt, especially since it affects the entire team right now. But if it did affect one target, we would probably use it on Captain America. And that's because we're using the World War II Cap, who starts the battle with Shield Guard, so he's going to be protecting right from the beginning. Now I'm using Captain America as a tactician, but you could run a double bruiser setup. The only thing I would recommend then is to go ahead and switch your agent to a tactician. That way if someone is using a blaster, at least your agent would get an extra turn with tactical maneuvers. Now as we're going into the second wave, go ahead and watch the enemies try to hurt Captain America. He has increased defense stacks times 9, and he also gets guardian force from time to time. So they absolutely do pretty much no damage to him whatsoever. In fact, he dodges a ton of the attacks, and then you see he takes only like 60 some damage. It really does feel like he's invulnerable once he has that Emerald Prism and all those defense stacks. And I know this is just against the computer, but you could use him in that battle 12.2. Some of you may have trouble defeating all those mini-bosses. Well, if you put Emerald Prism on a World War II cap, then he'll be a tank for you, and you really shouldn't have too many problems beating it, even on challenge mode. I really recommend trying it out. With this team, you can also use Colossus as a defender. All you have to do is use his Steel Curtain technique. The other surprising thing that we can sometimes forget is that Captain America can deal quite a bit of damage. Sometimes he can really damage an entire wave of enemies, or the whole opposing PvP team with his shield throw. Not to mention he will keep counterattacking with that shield guard, and that damage can really start to add up. This second battle will be the final PvE battle of the video. Then we're going to have three PvP battles, and all those are pretty interesting. You may be shocked when you see this team go up against Phoenix, but like I said, with the Emerald Prism, they're pretty much tanks, and you don't have to worry about all their abilities getting removed either. Now in the battle, you're seeing a Shield Bash counterattack, it took a grunt from full health to zero. Then Cap will easily take out another grunt. With Colossus, we will use his level one, and that'll put Exposed on the target. Then our agent's going to use the Neurotrope, followed by the Emerald Prism. Now in PvP, you could drop the Neurotrope and replace that with the scroll. That would allow you to keep the Sinister Scepter, and then a lot of opponents wouldn't be able to target you with too many attacks. Only characters that have psychic attacks, or a few other special characters like magic could hit you through phase. Captain America does get kind of hurt due to the fact that he didn't have increased defense yet, but he counterattacks with the shield bash for an epic overkill. Now there's just going to be one more enemy, and that'll be the end of the PvE battles. And we have the first three turns, so he's definitely not going to make it past these. We may be able to finish him with Colossus. So let's use his Decimate, and that gives us an overkill. The very first PvP battle will be against P5 Cyclops and P5 Emma Frost. Their agent is equipped with the Hotshot, so that could be kind of a problem. But let's see what Emma does first. She uses Psychic Tap on Colossus. Now our agent will get to take a turn, and we do have a scroll, but we're not going to waste it yet. We're going to use the Neurotrope and then the Emerald Prism. And that's going to set our team up very nicely. 
Right now I definitely want to keep using the Neurotrope because the Emerald Prism will stop them from removing any of the buffs that it gives as well, including the counterattack. So this is really overpowered right now, and it will be dialed down a little bit, but like I said, you could still target someone like Captain America, and he'll be a massive tank for you. So it won't be the end of the world when the Emerald Prism only targets one character again, which I do believe will happen. Their Cyclops uses evasive maneuvers, and then he's going to use Exploit Weakness, which Captain America steps up to take. And then he's going to counterattack with the Shield Bash. So that does 17k, and then he gets to counterattack one more time with the Leading Strike. And that was due to the Neurotrope. Next, their agent may use that Hot Shot, but we do have Cap. Well, instead he uses Hard Knocks, which Captain America does protect against. So we gain some increased defense, but we did get Soul Fire. Then we're going to counterattack with the Shield Bash. On Captain America's turn, we're going to target their Cyclops. That way we don't have to worry about getting counterattacked, because we should be able to take him out. So let's see how much damage we can do with a leading strike. We only have to do 10k, so we shouldn't have too many problems doing that. And you saw kind of the numbers there, so it looks like we're going to do 31k. So now we just have to wait for Emma to do a move. She started with her full team unlock potential, and then she uses Mental Trauma. This will actually cause your increased defense from the Emerald Prism to go through the roof. And really, any attack that has a bunch of hits in it will cause the same thing to happen. So any hit from Quicksilver, or maybe Squirrel Girl, for anyone that does a ton of hits, they're going to cause increased defense to go max right away. Now with their agent, we're going to use the Warbringer Axe on Emma Frost. It does an okay amount of damage, but it triggers organic recovery. Now with Colossus, we're going to use his big hit, his level 6 Decimate. And we're going to use that on Emma Frost. So let's see how much damage we do. He actually does over 40,000 damage and finishes Emma off. So that's pretty impressive, but if you thought that was something, wait till you see the hit that Captain America takes. So he uses the Warbringer Axe, and only does 580 damage. And on top of that, we got Shield Guard. So we finish with a 52,000 damage counterattack. Our next battle will be against Captain America in its World War II Bruiser outfit, an Infiltrator Phoenix, and Tactician Power Armor Agent. The region starts out with a pretty big hit on Captain America, and he's going to retaliate with the Shield Bash. It doesn't do that much damage, but we're just getting started. Now it's their Cap's turn to attack, and it looks like we're going to protect that as well. And you saw how that was a Shield Throw, so it would have been an AoE attack, but our Cap takes it, he blocked most of the damage, and then counterattacked. And this is why you have to love World War II Cap, especially with the Emerald Prism, which we're about to put on right now. We start with the Neurotrope, and we actually got Strengthened, Agile, and Regeneration on Captain America. Then we're going to use the Scroll of Angelob to remove their Shield Guard. Now we're going to use the Emerald Prism. So those buffs that came up from the Neurotrope on Captain America, as well as the rest of our team, will not be able to be removed. And now we're going to show you some of our confidence in this team. We're going to take out their agent, fully knowing that Phoenix is going to use Phoenix Fire. But we're really not worried about it. Colossus is going to finish their agent off, and I think it's worth it. Let's see what this Phoenix Fire does. So it only does a little bit of damage to everyone. And thanks to Guardian Force, it hardly hurts our agent at all. Now, just in case you're not familiar with Guardian Force, I should have told you what it does. It restores health and stamina, and reduces damage taken by 50% for one round. And in my experience, it procs quite a bit for your entire team. On top of that, Colossus is resistant to bleeding, burning, and chilled, resistant to psychic attacks, and has a very high crit resistance. The only thing I wish is that he started with a Protect. Here on my agent's turn, we did hesitate because we weren't sure if we wanted to use the axe and get counterattacked by Captain America. 
but I figured that it wouldn't do that much damage, and I'd gain some increased defense from getting hit. Now with our Captain America, we're going to target theirs, and we're going to use Shield Bash. So let's go ahead and use that on him, and it does way more damage than we thought it would. 45,000. It drops him down to zero health, and it's going to proc Death and Rebirth. Now let's see if our Colossus can finish him off with a level 1. So let's go ahead and use his level 1 Steel Fist, and it does enough damage. On Phoenix's turn, she uses Telekinesis and tries to stun our Colossus. It worked, and our scroll isn't up yet, so we're going to have to sit through that stun. On our Agent's turn, though, we're going to refresh Emerald Prism. And we really should have just hit Phoenix, but that's okay. Maybe Captain America will surprise us with another huge attack. So he hits for 34,000, and he gets counterattacked for 9k. Colossus is going to be stunned, so Phoenix will get another attack, and then we should be able to finish this battle. With our agent, we're going to have everything back up, so we can use the Neurotrope, the Scroll, and then also hit her with the Warbringer Axe. So let's go ahead and remove this Soul Fire, and then we're going to use the Neurotrope just to get whatever buffs we can. We like to be thorough even though we probably could have just used the Warbringer Axe and ended this battle. You never know if you might miss, so you should be cautious, especially if you're in a PvP tournament. All that raiding really counts, especially when you're in that last day in the final few hours. So this battle will be the final one of the episode, and we're kind of in a little bit of trouble, and that's because they're using the P5 Phoenix. P5 Phoenix may be one of the weak points for this team, and that's because she gives everyone on her team the possibility to have psychic attacks. That would definitely be a major drawback if you were using the scepter. The other problem with this particular battle is all three of the enemies are going to get to go before we use Emerald Prism. So yes, we do get the first two turns, but we'd much rather have our agent go first. You also kind of have to be weary about hitting the same character and giving them a bunch of War Frenzy stacks like we did with P5 Cyclops there. But as long as no one dies and he doesn't incapacitate our agent, we should be fine. Phoenix does start with a vicious telekinesis that stuns Colossus and takes him way down in health. Then their agent uses the signpost and probably will follow that up with a hotshot. Luckily Captain America can take that instead of the entire team. Now is pretty much the moment of truth we have to see if that Cyclops uses Mega Optic Blast. If he does, we have to hope it doesn't incapacitate our agent and make us skip our turn. Instead, it looks like he's going to use Optic Blast, and that hits Cap, who blocks most of the damage. He also had Guardian Force, so that really helped. With our agent, we can use the scroll and remove all those debuffs, as well as all the buffs from the enemies. So that's our first move. Then we're going to use the Neurotrope, and then the Emerald Prism. So this battle started out a little bit rough, but we made it through and I think we're going to be fine now. Especially since we gave regeneration to Colossus. I'm going to be really sad to see that Emerald Prism become a single target buff. But right now it is really overpowered, and I can definitely see why they'll have to fix it. In fact, by the time I post this video, they may have fixed it already. Once again, in this battle, we're going to do another bold move, and that's finish Cyclops. I think that with Captain America, we can use a shield throw and take him out a second time. And we'll see if that Phoenix Fire does a lot of damage, but I highly doubt it will. We definitely scored a really solid hit with that shield throw. The best part is we don't have to worry about Cyclops and his Mega Optic Blast, but Phoenix will do a Phoenix Fire. And there you see it doesn't do that much damage. So it's kind of funny how this team really doesn't have to worry about anything. Captain America and Colossus truly are immovable objects. Oh, and I also like how Signpost increases your defense. So every time he uses that, we get another increased defense. Then they're going to try to remove our buffs with the Scroll of Angelob. That won't work, and we get more increased defense. So the Warbringer Axe only does 2,240 damage, and we're going to be counterattacking. 
In fact, we should hit them twice. So a shield bash and a leading strike. And there is no more death and rebirth, because they are using the P5 Phoenix. One hit from the Warbringer Axe should end this battle. And that's going to be the end of the video. I really hope everyone enjoyed the team and the video. I want to thank you all for watching. If you liked the episode, please leave a rating. And if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do that. Thanks again, and until next time, good luck and take care.